They wrap behind P7. Oh, look at that! Look at the Over the window! Oh, oh, oh. Subscribe untuk mendapatkan info dan update terbaru dari UPGPC Indonesia. Going for the res could be the death of them, but do they do they go with two then? Wicked's been noted. Multicircle Gaming are getting the information. They now know an isolated player. The nade gets posted. Ling Du hopes for the best. Gets the tag. The damage from these boys. The underhand nades come out. The flash is coming in. Oh, it's falling. Oh. Sparking's gone down. This is now again a 2v3. The res, it's looking unlikely now. The blue will be forcing this fight. Yeah, just slowly strangulate them. Running out of air. We need Sills and all Wicked to just be able to tie this one up and do something. Sills and he's took out two. What? What has just happened? Evil Lee and Summer fall simultaneously. Ling Du. It's left to you in a one versus two. Oh my okay. word, Sills and what a what an opportunity. What a time to hit that. Oh, he's got Sills and there's no trait. Wicked. Oh, he's got both. He's got both of them. How on earth did he just pull that off? What? I think Genji are playing this better. Oath look a little lost for an answer. Inonix now on the push up as well. He's going to get towards Loki on this. Snakers, Pack Caps, Rello. They have been doing well so far. But Genji have done better in this moment. Oh, this ridgeline's good though. Snakers on the yes. low ground. This could be huge. Loki. Seemingly looking that way, keeping the track on it. Inonix has his back as well. Snakers sees one. That should be a kill all day long. Where's the kill coming? Snakers, he whiffs it for just a second. And now there's problems because Pack Caps now comes in. Inonix put into what? A 1v3. He's got the first. Pack Caps goes down. Rello and Snake are still alive. And the smokes are up. Inonix is creeping forward. He's going to move towards Loki here. Going to move past him. Spots out. Rello spins around on a dime. See Snakers. He's, he's in a 1v2 on angles that are not favorable. Surrounded, Snakers should have this. And now Relo gets the flush and looks for more. Nomex watching that ridge line like a hawk. That pixel peeks up, pops a shot, nothing more happens. How is he gonna get the advantage here? Looks again. Oath don't have an answer just yet. No nades to come towards him. Another smoke invested his last smoke. Now goes in. Snake is still visible. In Onyx. Peaks again. This man looks just invulnerable. He's still oh alive and this God. is creeping in. He's got good damage for his own HP. In Onyx, the ridge line spots out Snake is, but now the damage comes back. 26 HP here. He's still looking. He's still trying to find Rello. He knows there's still someone close to him. He's looking at that smoke. He knows there's a problem still. And on the ridge line, he finds Rello. He's looking at Snake is. He's one HP. He's putting everything into this Snake is as yet to move. He's hit the deck. He's not surrendering. He's pushing no! forward on one HP. I cannot believe it. He never stopped. He never surrendered. And Chen G against the odds. Those nades. Pop a little on the hand. They seem very aware of that potential position coming in from Tiamba. But there it is. Pushus finds it. And now to the final. 3v4. T1 haven't been as proactive as I imagined. They've been playing this ridgeline like their life depends on it, but it's cost them a little bit of a move in the right direction. Venotica's got a deeper angle. I like this. Look at the proactive utility use. Venotica litters the floor with Molotovs. They can't run through it anymore. They are bottlenecking T1 right towards them. This is so smart. Now T1 on the rotation. Day trade. Do they realize this? Nurin's flashed up. Looks towards the smoke. Sees one. Sees two. He sees so many. The spin. Venotica's got his back. Day trade. Absolutely decimating T1 here. Not even an answer made. Day trade. Lock it down. You can't do anything else Circle. in this scenario. You Where's need your Maxman to step up to the plate. Look at all those DMRs. They're just lined this... up. Sonics are ready, willing, and able to win this. This is Sonics' game to win. This is it. They, this is their exact moment to win this. They have the circle, they have the positioning, and they have Mime in a wonderful angle. Now, yes, he's outside of the new circle, but he is holding back the entirety of Virtus Pro, who've destroyed a huge amount of this lobby. 15 kills is wildly impressive. 
So now this is Sonic's on the verge of victory. They have to play this to perfection though, because you know Virtus Pro are looking at every potential option. You've seen the Molotovs going in towards Mime. They know he is a huge problem for them. But how do they avoid it? How do they get around this? I don't know how they can. Is there an option on that kind of southeast rotation maybe? I don't know. I don't know what they've got left and the terrain is horrible. Six smokes though, they could commit some to this, but it's still very hard to make this work. Now Mime might be left to kind of rot in the blue, but he's gonna force his way up here. They've committed everything to him because again, this was the only real way off this mountainside and now he can let rip with the nades that he has. Be a nuisance, be a complete pain in the backside. They're in the vehicles, they know it's time to go. The blue is here and it will kill them. Full send, this is the last chance to dance for VP in this match. The nades come out, they're ready. Tickleton is there, he greets them with a smile and a couple of bullets as well. Up and over he goes, Batulin leaps out, he gets one of the train! But the nade comes out and Sonic secure victory. The boy is just ratting it out in the garbage right now. A meta, how are they meant to know this? And Tiamba are dealing with E36. You've got Lin Shun just kind of clearing house here. I'm not until, yeah, done for. Look at this, re-peeking that ridge line for HP. Lin Shun, get careful. Maybe not, re-peek it. Get the kill, why not? What do I know? And while this happens, keep your eyes on that player. Keep your eyes on Kickstarter. Do they, the mollies. They're in the fire, the they're in the fire. The mollies, they're working, they're burning alive. Kickstarter's just gonna keep his head down. It's another for Mings! What is happening, Rich? I, I, I actually can't believe this right now. Tiamba in the best position possible. There are two knocks for Meta, and suddenly appearing out through this is Sparky trying to find a way out. There's no way out! What 12 just kills! You can see what it means to them. Their faces just say more than a thousand words possibly could. Might be the time to shine, especially if they've got all their utility, it's time to commit it to the cause. Buram have already done the same thus far by removing a Freak of Freaks and doing damage. That's a nice little dip, but it's answered instantly. God Meow goes back and now Silzen and Co. It's time for them to join in. The bombardment has commenced. Buram and DXG both damaged Longskur is going to remove himself from water, and he is behind enemy lines well and truly. It's just a Navy SEAL just from the water peeking up, has a look, doesn't want to give away too much. His position has not been noted to my understanding, so Buram could be in for a terrible surprise. Meta have to make their move. They had been noted prior to now, so Edie's going to watch out for that, finds one, looks for the second. Just living in the smoke, it looks like the molly's burning anyway. Buram, 15 kills now. Now there's two snakes, and Longska still has not been checked on. He's made it to the water now, mini in hand. Three players in front and one off to the side. He sees one. Oh my god, he's got all three of them right there. That's two. A third would be fantastic. And DXG will probably look going, wait, there's another? Where did he oh! just come from? Out of nowhere. The beast from the water emerges, and now the 1v1 DXG. Body baffled, but IQ 500 trying to keep cool under pressure. Looks in, gets attacked, but there's an answer right back. He's won it. He's only got a won it. The numbers advantage will go the side of both for all but a second. But Kanaxi is playing so damn aggro at the moment. He's holding this line. And this has worked for so many teams in the past. Edie's found pack caps, that's a problem. And now Balefrost and Snake is called upon. And they're still just behind this smoke wall. They have so little information on this. Tab is watching all of this unfold as well. Holding his breath patiently. But Edie, Kanaxi, still alive. Got me out maybe looking for information here. I think he might have just stayed forward. Edie, he's found Balefrost. Oath looks like they're terrified and I don't blame them. Burram are looking dangerous. Tab stayed out of nowhere, almost did them in, but no. Buram, after heartbreak, pull it together. A 14 kill win, fired up off that last loss. They pull it through here and prove they deserve their spot in the weekend. With another follow up from IQ 500, it starts to make things that little bit more easy, but they still have to go up against DA. That's, that's the bigger thing, right? All DA have to come outside. There's only limited windows of movement that they can take. Yeah, they, they, 
Leaving this compound is, is almost impossible now. They have two doorways, and that's about it. DXG have them surrounded. Put the guns down. Come out with your hands up. You are not escaping this one. Long K is going to keep them locked in there as long as he can. DXG on the verge of this. Yes, you might be able to get a res, but you've still got to find a mad way out. Neil T says, no. You need some big utility, something wild. Maybe they'll hop through onto the other seats. You can get outside of this. It looks like they can't. Mert now just has to make the last stand. This is Division X all day long. DA left it too late in the day. They could not make it out. And DXG work their way through. Well composed, good rotations, great adjustments. They make it to that first place into the weekend. Even if he doesn't get any knocks or flushes or anything, he can just guide that information to the rest of Zenith who can wrap down. Forever's still here, so even if they do make it across that road, they have to deal with another player. They eliminate him, and now the game is given up. The information is well and truly in the abundance of Zenith. They are just waiting for the smokes to dissipate. The walking wounded Pentalol, the last man standing. We've seen a few clutches, but off. You just have to say that this is a bridge too far. A four versus one. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Zenith qualify to the grand finals. Thus far, Zenith have been looking phenomenal in this competition. At one point, they were well and truly up there. First place. Let's see how many players are left standing once this fight is all said and done. The grenades will now come through in abundance from the side of STK. They've worked closer to the middle. They've pinned Ents in. Ents was so distracted by VP, and, they, and rightfully so, they had to deal with him haphandedly. Halo has found Petra Coro. That has been denied. Shuts that push down. Huge work. And another team has been removed in the wake of STK. Okay, STK now should have 100% control in this lobby. Ents would have to pull off some of those individual brilliant plays to try and dissuade this. They have everything. All the smokes go up, the wall goes down. Rustamon's got a nice angle potentially, unless he gets caught off. Trade out comes in. Halo finds one, but it goes right back in it. But there it is. Luke 12. Kurt's coming in. They're all getting the flushes. I don't know how many are alive for Ents. I think just one here. Diggory with it all to do. He tries to find the flank. He gets he shot him in the back of the head, I think, there. He got a bit of damage, but he doesn't even know the smoke is so thick in front of the eyes. And they're taken down in the end. Shoot to kill. Claim their spot in the finals. Bill Frost, these guys swept through so many teams to get here. Do not doubt what they have done. Do not disrespect how hard they fought for this. 12 kills now. And a 4v2. Meta, you would have to go above and beyond now if you want this. Sills and Sparking are there. An oath wait on top of the compound, the flash is in hand. Rello wants this one done. He wants to move on. Can he get rid of these final two players? I'm looking for it. Certainly, different angle of abundance will do a fair amount of damage. That puts him on red alert. Relo, though, oh my word, answers and instantly responds. Oh! If it was a game of poker, it would be a four of a kind. All four North American teams have now qualified for the World Championship Grand Finals. All questions across the board about North Americans' potential performances have been answered. Stand up tall. The top of the ridgeline is theirs. They've got all the gear, all the goods. And they are just locked and loaded, Turtle. What can you do? Anything? No. Swept through 4 a.m. Large and in charge, finding their form in the final moments after Rents tore through the lobby. The Finns fought well, but 4 a.m. timed this so, so perfectly. And now on the other side, what can be done? A kill, anything. That's not bad. Machow finds Lou. But Lou is wildly in the open, trying to move on up. And you can see 4 a.m. look confident. They look ready to go. These guys are out for blood. They want to get through to the weekend. And with a spray like that, they might just do it. 4 a.m. qualify through. In a 1v2. He's done this before, and he could potentially do it again. All of Europe's hopes and dreams are residing on his back. With the two Korean players still out in the open, a few smokes and a few trees is all that stands between them and Metralius. He has the hard cover, and he probably has more time. But he needs to make these shots land both. 
teams, all players just committing to the cause. Goes out in the open. He tries to molly him. That's the one move done, and it now falls to a one versus one. On the other side is EJ. Eyes locked towards this. Smash potentially resable, but do you go for that? That'd be too risky, surely. EJ, if he senses this, could move up on this, but Code Marco should be able to call it. Metralius still out here. Molly goes in. Metralius in the bottom left, top right is EJ. EJ still looks for this, though, but who plays the smoke better? Metralius on the swing around. Has he seen him? He hasn't managed to see him. EJ getting away with murder here. Just focus towards that tree. Maybe a miscall came out because it looks like Metralius simply does not have the vision on the edge of that smoke. A spray in. And now EJ gets closer forward in towards the blue. Now Flash comes out. EJ working a little closer. Hits the deck by the next box. See if he gets some more utility. Nothing for this right now. Metralius, he's in the blue. He's flashed up. He has no idea where he is now. Completely blind. And EJ's got him pinned in the smoke. It's over. It's done against the literal odds. A freak of freaks. My God, they make it. This is getting shut down. T1, this is your game to win. But does a snake in the grass, does someone like Batulins play a spoiler to this one? He knows he is not really long for this world. And once again, VP, you get so close, but it's just so, so damn far. There it is. Confirmed by T1. Four standing against the one. There was no other way that was going to go down. Petrical Road were broken by the three teams that had crashed them. And T1 maintained position. T1 joining the other teams towards our weekend final with a solid game. It was a good close down for them. They played it well. Again, maintaining position. Did not falter. Did not make mistakes. They were one of the initial teams I talked about. Yeah, this is the first commitment now. Ends move forward phase, giving up the game. They've heard the shots to the left-hand side. Digger, Itixu, falls simultaneously. Senior also. Navi, first one to fall. Big Nate comes in. Uber, time to step Ends up to gone. the plate. Where's the rest of them? So we've lost two just like that. It comes down to one player of E36, Face Clan. Team Liquid melting away. The mollies are down. How many players are left standing? 2v2. That's all that remains for both these teams. Phase can get a res, get three back up, but I don't know if they're going to get the time for it. AT going to be tasked with keeping them at bay. Ibby on the wrap as well. Clip trying to get the heal off. Ibby now in towards the blue, buddy. you got to get moving. Uber's going to catch you. Uber's got a great spray towards Ibby. One H shot. Easy shot comes Icy. down in the end. And the positioning from Itzy was perfect. FaZe finally do it. And it's a sigh of relief. This isn't just excitement and all of this. It's we've made it to the weekend. That's what they needed. That is exactly what they needed. The ticket through. And with only other one game spared, they did it almost in the final game. He still stand. K7 watching this, but E36 and TSM now in a bloodied battle, forcing the fight on each other. Sabia can see all this one. He's got a knock. E36 is running in towards TSM. The problem is, is that Savior has full vision clear. They didn't realize they got this close within proximity. Ibi trying to do all he can to batter them back. If Mexi can put one of them on the backside, it gives breathing room an opportunity to go and get the resuscitation, which they do. That damage has been so good to hold back. Booyahu for now. TSM still landlocked between what is a building, a smoke, an E36, all four players still alive and kicking. They're going deeper against the edge. They won't see them on this angle. TSM, they mean they wrap behind K7. Oh, look at that! Mexi! Over the window! <laughs> Absolutely nuts work from Mexi. Finds one, now Savior the last alive. Gonna have to live up to that name if he wants K7 to do this. And he's given it a valiant attempt. But Mexi's work was unbelievable. E36 is still alive in the north, though. TSM still alive in the north with two. Team Liquid with three towards the south. Bard now watching towards E36. Bard takes down Aminok, but there's Pure Boy, there's Sato. I don't know if that Orm is still out and about. I'm not seeing it to hand, but he sees him. The nade comes in, it looks quite good. It's a little too deep, maybe. Bounces past Pure Boy. They stay alive for another second. But the Blues on the back and Liquid are on the move. What? Liquid out of nowhere. Bring the pain. Sato goes down. Ibby's taking the fight on this. 
There's nothing else you can do. You might as well get involved with this. You understand the lay of the land. You understand the fight's over here. So why not hit them? Kick them while they're down. That's exactly what's going to happen from multiple angles. Riku onto Pure Boy. There is a slight response, but not much when you've only got one player left standing. All this is going in the favor of Team oh Liquid Savior. What's left in the tank? You are a lone snake, but honestly, I think this is a bridge too far. Liquid's just killing everyone oh on the God. battlefield. What on earth is happening? TSM now back to the blue. One smoke in front of them. Once they leave, it's either going to be Ibi or maybe Savior to see them. It depends who sees who first. A flashbang will hinder them even further. They can't make that run anymore. Miracle and Bard. Options have been just ripped away. The spray comes in. Ibi comes alive. Seven kills. Now going to be eight if he gets that flush. Clip by his side. They lock it down. And now a 3v1. Liquid up against Savior. No greater name could be put towards K7 if they want this. They've kept track of this, and now they watch and they wait. Liquid have been down and out through this tournament. They have been a shadow of their former selves, and they rise from the ashes in the final moments. Liquid, make it through.